Okay, this is part two of the uh, rollover type stove or roll inside stove, the Bud Light stove. Now, every process in here, you know, whatever you do here means success. To do it right means success. But the one thing that really dictates success here is the die for the rolling over. Now, I've got this die here, which I made quite a long time ago, and I don't know, it's, it's very difficult to see, but the success of this particular die is this. When you expand this, if you expand it and you feel just underneath the, you know, the shiny part here where it just starts to be blue, if you can go all the way around here and feel an expansion ridge, you've got a good die. That's a good die. Just this expansion ridge all the way around. Now, I've made many of these and this is the best one I ever made and believe it or not, this, I'm going to show you the way I made it. I do have an alternative method that I've tried which hasn't been all that successful but if anybody has a better idea, I mean this is kind of the Achilles heel here, if you can't get a good die it's very difficult to make one of these stoves that are you know, number one looks good and and uh, you know functions well so anyway I've got uh, I got a bottle here is full of water I got a plastic sheath over it I think you can see that yeah you can see that and um, I've greased it up with Vaseline on the inside of this and the bottom of the uh, bottle too and all I'm really going to do I mean I've seen people and there's videos out there of people and they they tell me they can do this by hand and expand this by hand well they must have a gorilla hand because there's no way I can do it. Now normally I would do this on the floor but I'm going to do this right over to 4x4 four four on, my, on my workbench here and I'm just going to try and drive this thing in as straight as I possibly can. I think really that's the, the real you know idea here and really the, the uh, you know if, if you can get it to go in straight. Now what, what I can tell you this is that when, when you cut this portion for the blank itself, for the stove itself it's pretty easy going, but when you get down on this level here, this area here of this bottle, I, for whatever reason, when they make the bottles, I think the material gets thicker down here in the bottom than it does in the body itself here. So this is really a little tougher to get through when you're cutting it with a hacksaw or something, but make sure you adhere to all the same uh, criteria as far as the cleanup on the edges and everything else that you did with the blank here. It means a lot not to have any burrs or anything when we do this process. So I'm going to try this and like I said I've been successful one or two times but not many, many times but this is the only way I've been successful so I'm going to try this and we're just going to tap it to get it started and you can tell if you put your hand down there what direction it's going in and if you want I've got a little hand Thing here I can tell right now it's not going in terribly straight but you can loosen that back up again it's it's got a hole in the bottom of the oh here I can tell right now we're not even going in straight so I'm gonna have things flying off my bench here pretty soon yeah I can see we're not we're not any good with this one just make sure we're seated Okay. Now it's all the way down inside, and I know you can't possibly see this, but um, it's not much ridge on this side here. Most of the ridge is over on this side here. Now I'm going to, I've actually made two blanks, so I'm going to try this one and show you the difference what this one does as compared to my, the one I do have that's good. Again, anybody has a better idea, let me know. My other method here that I have, and let's see where is it is, this here. And what this is, of course, is the a larger portion of the bottom of the stove, and then another portion which I expanded to put over this part, and on the inside here is sand. So this thing is, you know, it's heavy. And um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the camera over to the, uh, my little arbor press. I've got another blank. We'll try it again over there and see if I can have any more better success than this one here. So uh, again, I don't know. Somebody's got to tell me because if you look at, of course, Mini Bull Design or other people who have a machine shop, they make it with a, 
you know, a metal die. This is just kind of hit and miss. So um, let, let me turn this off. I'm going to see if we can't uh, do it over on the on the arbor press. So let me set the camera back up again and we'll be right okay, back. Okay, we're at the arbor press now. I've got it lined up as close to the center of the arbor as I possibly can. Um, I've actually got the, the potential die on the bottom and the press tool on the top. I've not done it this way before. I thought maybe this would be a little bit better way and a couple blocks on the bottom. And what I'm going to try and do is just try to keep it, try to keep it straight going in. Um, we'll engage the arbor and uh, let's give it a whirl. Let's see where we go. Okay, we're all the way down. Give me a rag. Ah, this one doesn't seem too bad. This one seems pretty good. Not as good as uh, my good one, but a little bit better. Again, I'm, it's maybe I'll try it with this one here, since the other one I don't think is as good. But we'll we'll try it with this one and with what I think is my better one, and we'll get some kind of a comparison between the two. And uh, let me go ahead and get that prepared to roll these over. And um, I'll be back in uh, just a, a few seconds. Okay, we're set up. I got the blank in there. I've got the uh, tool that we just made in there. And you can see it's pretty tight because the throat in this press is not all that great. And this does take a little bit of oomph. So I'm going to go ahead and take it down. You'll know when you're at the bottom. Okay. Let's take a look. And you can see that, see it's a little bit, yeah. hopefully you can see that. Let me turn this up so I can see what I'm looking at. And you can see in the bottom here, it's got a dipple here in the bottom. That's not good, not good. Not good at all. But there is a way to fix that in a way. So I'm going to show you that soon here. So we'll leave this one here, up here. And let me go over here and get my good one. Yeah, this is it. And let me just here and put a little grease on this. And we'll put a little grease on the blank. All right. Wipe my hands off a little bit here. Put this puppy under here. Center it up with the arbor as best I can. Not bad. And let's see. Try to slide that in without disrupting that. Okay. Let's go to town. I'm going to lift this up and I'm going to put one more on here because I can hear the wood going crazy on me here. Okay. Okay. When I said this is my good die, you can see the difference, hopefully. You can see the difference in there. Let me see. You can you can see the difference. It's uh no little dimplies in there, no distortions.
No. It's kind of crazy. I didn't get it all the way down. Didn't you see that? Must be because I was. Okay, where are my two blocks? Line her back up again. Good. We weren't. Now let's look. Oh. Yep, just like I said. Here we go. <laughs> Sorry about that. I thought we were all the way down and I couldn't see it. Anyway, um, we're all the way down. It's real nice all the way around. This is what the difference is about having a good die. A good die, like I said, with the ridges. <laughs> I can't believe I missed that, but okay. Having a good die makes the biggest difference. So um, this was just hit and miss. I mean, I made it just the way I pounded one in like that one day, and I just got it absolutely right. So you can see how really important it is to have a good die. So okay, let me uh, stop the camera here, and I got one other thing I want to show you. It does correct that a little bit. Um, I think the stove would still be usable. I think we can still salvage it, but uh, I'm going to have to look and see. I'm going to show you that here in just a minute. I have to turn the camera around, go back over to the bench, and I'll be back in a second.